Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Ryus and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. We finally finished covering all of the new Shigami of the new pack. So if you guys have any requests of Shigami you want to see on the next deck showcase, let me know down below. Before we start the video, we got a couple of cards that got nerfed and buffed, so let's talk about that for a bit. And for those who just want to see the deck, you can skip ahead with the timestamp. First up, with the nerf. Kanko Bamboo Missile got nerfed and lost the rebound. That is very nice. Kanko was really oppressive because of this card. Hopefully, now it will be better in ranked. For some reason, Hana got nerfed too. I, I know Fragrance is strong, but she needs a lot of setup to make it happen. And she can be easily killed by today's Shigami. And that homing bird losing the draw is really really bad for fields because fields already use a lot of cards and using that draw will definitely hurt a lot. Next is Higanbana's card. I would argue that this is better than the previous effect. Now Agro can get a fast draw card with a rebound and huge rally buff easily. And as for Kappa's form, it's still bad so we don't need to talk about that. Next page is oof. My boy no Kanchi got nerfed. Burial Rites is still usable but Soul Separation will definitely get dropped because it will only work on the combat zone. Okay, the Wisteria Dance nerf is really annoying. I thought it was fine in level 2 but they moved it to level 3. But they also buffed the effect by giving 3 Fujiiro instead of 1. It's even more powerful than before but slower. And the last page for the nerf is Hoga's form now no longer needs luck check. That's very nice. Maybe people would run this as the one-off but I doubt it because you can just run the SSR and it gets the job done faster. Then we have Yoko's form now level 1. I doubt you would run this because Destiny is still a much better form than this one. Ototo's form now self-inflict fragile when activated. The amount is very minuscule. They should have made it every turn so it will be easier to set up his cards. And now for the buff. Celebratory wishes it's now really good because every time you use her amulet the form stats will increase. Night Raid is now even better because you get that extra attack and shield. Kappa's form now have haste, that's actually very good because it doesn't take forever to set up up for attack. Next page is Ibaraki's form now works even if it's not in your hand. Well, finally. It should have been that way a long time ago, but the random power up is still meh. Club Bomb is now very good because now it can easily kill Shikigami with 5 health. Or more. Divine Shadow will see more play now because that extra one attack and the alternate art just got released. And for the last page is Vision got a lifesteal keyword. Okay, now you can use it offensively, not just sitting back waiting for the opponent to use something. Dice Bomb getting fast is very good. And Windblade now can target every unit is awesome. Now Yoko is essentially a cheaper and faster Itsumade. Well, that's about it for the buff and nerfs. So let's jump into the deck rundown, shall we? Well, that was quite a long intro, so I will try my best to keep the deck rundown brief. This deck playstyle is semi-aggro. You want to attack just enough so that the opponent doesn't have a big advantage against you. And the best thing about this deck is that you can take your time because you can easily get back the life you lost. So first up, we have the star himself, Shiro and Kuromujo. He's our main attacker and we're going to use him as control and finisher for this deck. For him, we're bringing two brother memories. I've I think this is standard for any Kuromujo build because it builds up the switch count. Then we have to punish since there's a lot of Shigami that has powerful effects staying back on the standby zone. This will help you to take care of it. Then we have to evolve. Try to get this card in your hand as early as possible because it will make your life easier once you evolve Shiromujo. Then we have one slay. I think one is enough. I've seen people bringing two but with good timing one is definitely enough to kill the opponent. Then we have one death sentence. Not only this has a shit ton of keyword, that Fatal is really valuable for fighting against Stall deck. But I would recommend evolving Shiro first before putting this on because this card will make you switch to Shiro on the opponent's turn. And Shiro doesn't have the highest stats before evolving. Next is the standard support for Charge Shigami, Kyoribo. She is here as our main draw power and utility. For her, I'm bringing two Sunbathe. This is a really great card for Kuromujo because it will instantly give in one charge and most of the time 
time you want to attack with Kuromujo at 1 charge, then activate Sunbathe to recover his health and give him 1 charge so he can switch on the opponent's turn. Then we have 2 Sun Prayer, great card to dig through our deck because we will be using a lot of cards to deal with the opponent. Then we have 2 Blazing Stun, Hyoribo Stun is actually really powerful because it will stun the opponent Shigami for 2 turns instead of the standard 1 turn. So if you activate it at the right timing, you can easily stop the opponent from making any big plays. Then we have 2 Sunshine and Rain, not only this will let us recover back to 30 health, this card will also make our Vampira really big and scary because we heal constantly every turn. Then we have Hakuzosu, this is my take on Hakuzosu and I don't think you will need his SSR so for him, I'm bringing 1 Oath of Protection, use this when you're up against decks that has a lot of projectile and you should be safe until they snipe Haku. Then we have 2 Leave it to Kohaku, a targeting negate with build and draw is really good and this will always be useful because the opponent will often try and snipe Hyoribo because she will use her health to activate her form effect. Then we have 2 Ferocity, killing any Shikigami that has 6 or more attack will definitely hurt your opponent, especially if that Shikigami is in the combat zone. Then we have 1 Evolve, I think 1 is enough because we usually don't want to tank using Haku. Then we have 2 Blazing Trail, this card is amazing to use and I would usually use 2 at the same time just in case 1 isn't enough to kill all of them. And lastly we have Vampira, she is our comeback option because of her lifesteal cards and her passive increasing attack every time you heal. For her, I'm bringing 2 Blood Strike, a simple combat card with lifesteal. Uh, try not to use this to attack Shigami because Vampira doesn't have the highest health out there. Then we have 2 Shield of Bats, uh, with how this deck is built, it is okay if you want to take damage. In fact, you want to take damage because we can heal them back with Hyoribo and at the same time buffing Vampira too. Then we have 2 Bloodlust, this is a really good card to defend yourself while also healing you back to full health. Then we have to evolve to make Vampira gain more attack and intimidate the opponent. And that's about it for the deck rundown. This deck is really cheap because we only bring Shiro and Kuromujo's SSR but I wouldn't recommend it for the new player because the Shikigamis are from 4 different packs. Putting that aside, let's move on with the replays. Our first match is up against this very unique Kairaishi deck but I guess this one is more leaning to Enma and Tamamo. They got the first turn since they have King Yohime. I'm going to bet she is going to be their first level up. Oh, okay. I guess they don't have her cards, so they pick Enma instead. Alright then. On our turn, we want to level up our charge Shigami first so that they can use their effect. And with their deck, we can take our time setting up things, so we put Sun Prayer on Hyoribo and pass. On their turn, they activate King Yohime's spell to attach King Yo to her, then use Enma to attack again, dealing a big 6 damage and pass. That was quite good, but on our turn, we level up our Hakuzosu, then use him to kill their ghost and pass. They will definitely try to take out our Hakuzosu with Enma. On their turn, they activate Soul Seize as I predicted. We're going to negate that and they will just attack with Enma to kill our Hakuzosu and pass. On our turn, we're going to evolve Kuromujo, then use Blood Strike to recover some of our health. After that, we attack with Kuromujo and pass. Ooh, we draw Shiromujo Evolve, very nice. At the start of their turn, King Yohime will activate her skill and attack our Kuromujo. They will put Prayer on Tamamo, then they activate Soul Seize to kill our Hyoribo. Damn, we could've used her trigger on their next turn. Then they will attack with Enma and pass. On our turn, we activate Brother's Memory to switch back to Kuromujo. I made a misplay here. I should have attacked with him first before activating Blood Strike, but I think we should be fine for now. On their turn, they will evolve King Yohime that will buff Tamamo and activate his skill, turning 4 damage to our unit and dealing 2 damage to Vampira. Then they will use Enma to kill her and pass. On our turn, we're just going to put Oath of Protection on Hakuzosu, then attack. This is also a misplay. I should've just let him stay back and let them attack for one turn. On their turn, they activate Tamamo's field. That will activate his skill, almost killing our Haku. 
but then King Yohime activates her skill, killing our Haku. That will trigger the field, dealing 2 damage to our Kuromujo, then they activate Soul Strike to kill our Kuromujo. Thankfully, the field only works once per turn. They activate Vicious Let's Go and pass. Next turn they will level up twice, so we're just going to pass and surprise them. On their turn, they try to level up Kairaishi, she will get stunned. Enma will get stunned too. So they have no choice but to attack with King Yohime and pass. On our turn, we put Sunshine and Rain on Hyoribo. This card will make Vampira become a beast. We also put Bloodlust on her and pass. At the start of their turn, Tamamo will activate his skill and hit Hyoribo. But since the projectile hit us, she will recover 3 health. They activate Fan Dance that will activate a bunch of King Yohime cards. attacking us for 14 damage. Then they will attack us again, dealing a total of 18 damage. Normally we would just give up, but we still can make a comeback from this. On our turn, we activate Punish to hunt Tamamo. Then use Bambira to attack their King Yuhime. We activate Sunbei to speed up our Kuromujo charge and pass. At the start of their turn, King Yohime will heal herself. They will put Enma's SSR, then evolve her to attack our Vampira. She will die, but our health is back to 20 points and they will pass. On our turn, we activate Slay. I didn't count it properly, so we're going to miss 1 damage. We activate Ferocity to kill that Enma, then attack with Kuromujo and pass. On their turn, they perform on Kairaishi that will trigger King Yohime's skill, healing them for 4 points. After that, they activate Kairaishi's spell to get 2 forms for free. They will fuse all of them and attack our Kuromujo. They hit us with the 5 damage piercing, that's not enough for them, so they activate their Arfishes here and pass. On our turn, we evolve Shiromujo, we attack with him to kill Kairaishi with the Reflect ability. Then activate Brother's Memory to switch back to Kuro and pass. At the start of their turn, King Yohime will kill our Kuro. They activate their last Fishes Let's Go, then put Prayer on Tamamo. After that, they attack with Tamamo. They probably want to keep King Yohime because she is the only one capable of healing them at this point. On our turn, we're going to evolve Vampira, then use her to kill Tamamo. At the end phase, she will get 3 attack and 3 shield. On their turn, they will attack with Enma, that will trigger King Yohime's skill, killing them again. They still have 1 attack remaining, so they will kill our Vampira and pass. On our turn, since we still have huge advantage over them, we're just going to pass. On their turn, they attack with Enma, that will trigger King Yohime's skill, buffing the ghost. Then they activate another one of Kairaishi's spell, getting them another two forms, and they will immediately fuse them. At this point, you might be wondering if we're going to win by tech out. The answer is no. <laughs> We evolve Hakuzosu, then use him to kill the ghost and pass. On their turn, they activate Blazing Snow, killing our Haku. Then they use Kairaishi to deal 10 damage to us and pass.
on our turn we don't want the trigger card to activate on their turn so we put another sunshine and rain on Hyoribo then activate shield of bath on Kairashi then we attack with Kuro and we will switch to Shiro with this our preparation is complete at the start of their turn, King Yo will heal them again. They will attack with Kairashi. That attack will be reflected back and kill her. After that, they will evolve Tamamo. At the end phase, he will kill Shiro and they will pass. Well, you look at that. Our Vampira just has enough attack to kill them in one hit. And with that, we win the game. Our second match is up against this Genkuro stall deck. Well, you know the drill, with Genkuro stuff, try to kill them as fast as possible. This time we got the first turn, we're going to level up Kuromujo and pass, because attacking now will just make it harder for us later. On their turn, they will just attack with Odokuro and pass. That's the typical first turn for them, 90% of the time. On our turn, we put Sun Prayer on Hyoribo and pass. We need to get more cards to deal with their stuff. On their turn, they attack with Hitotsume, then put Heart of Sutra on him and pass. On our turn, we're just going to put Oath of Protection on Hakuzosu and pass. On their turn, they will evolve Hitotsume, then attack our life and pass. On our turn, we evolve Kuromojo, then use him to damage Hitotsume. We activate Brother's memory to switch and kill that Hitotsume and pass. On their turn, they attack our Kuro with Odokuro, then put Call from the other side on him. After that, they activate Introgate to kill our Kuro and pass. That was smart, I gotta admit that one. On our turn, we're going to attack with Hakuzosu and pass, leaving one orb for trigger. On their turn, they try to level up Genkuro, but he will get stunned. They attack with Odokuro, that will kill him, but he will revive immediately. Then they activate Banquet of Dead to kill our Haku and Hyoribo. That was actually impressive, very good timing. On our turn, we put Bloodlust on Vampira, then use her to attack Odokuro and pass. On their turn, they evolve Hakuzosu, then use Hitotsume to kill our Vampira and pass. On our turn, we will kill their Hitotsume with Kuro. We activate Brother's Memory to switch back to Kuro, leaving one orb for Trigger. We don't want to activate Slay just yet. On their turn, they activate Genkuro's SSR, then put a form on him and pass. Now it's a race against the clock, because the longer we leave them, the stronger they get. On our turn, we're just going to attack with Kuro and pass, leaving two orbs for trigger. We need to hold on just for this turn and we can win. On their turn, they will evolve Odokuro, then use him to attack. But we got Vampira's trigger to take that damage to our life. On our turn, we activate Ferocity to kill their Odokuro. We put Death Sentence on Kuro, then activate Slay, just enough to kill them. And that is how you use Shiro and Kuro Mujo. Well, that's all for today's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Sorry the video got a bit long because I want to talk about the card updates. Also, this deck is a request from Michael Agustino. So I hope this meets your expectation. And I've been thinking of trying a live stream with you guys. Maybe a friend duel stream or something. But I still have to figure out the stuff I need to set up before I can actually do it. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, I have Patreon and Ko-Fi links down below. And as usual, if you have any kind of feedback, leave it down in the comments and see you next video. Bye.